Board of Education Office and at each of the school districts in the, uh, in the uh, sorry, school buildings in the district. Roll call, please. Mr. Anderson? Here. Mrs. Adelis? Here. Dr. Moore? Here. Mr. Kim? Here. Mr. Capello? Here. Mr. Cass? Here. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we will uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, uh, tonight we're going to be reviewing our 2022-2023 HIV self-grading presentation. Uh, Dr. Forte, will you be uh, doing that for us tonight? Yes, thank you. Okay. So every year the um, state requires, according to the law, that we grade ourselves on on different areas. The areas that are listed there, the, ele the elements, which are HIV programs, HIV the training on Board of Education HIB policies, HIB staff training, curriculum and instruction on HIB, HIB personnel, school level HIB reporting, HIB investigation procedures and HIB reporting. So we get graded, we self-grade our, we self-grade our programs on all those categories. And this year, the staff graded at Valley View graded themselves 78 out of 78, which is different. They, there have been times where there were under 78. And I think that once there's something that might be a little off, they maybe they do a little bit more of something and then they feel comfortable giving themselves a, a higher score. And Riverview School is 76 out of 78 and Lakeview School is 77 out of 78. So um, what happens now is we submit this to the state and then sometime in the, I think in the spring, they review it and then they send it to us and then we have to post their document on there. And in your attachment, if you look at the attachment in the packet, you'll see the supporting details to all of it. That gets that that entire thing, once it's verified by the state, will be posted on the website as required by law as well. So um, once this is has been presented to you and approved, the board then the superintendent has to verify this tomorrow on the uh, what's called Homeroom, which is a online portal for all our documents with the Department of Ed. And then uh, they, like I said, they review it and they get back to us if they feel like there's some discrepancies. If not, they just tell you post this on the website. And that's it for today. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them if the president's okay with that. Thank you, Steve. That's great. Um, yeah, any open it up for uh, any board questions on the uh, the self report? Go ahead, Steve. Just a quick question. Um, do they ask for any supporting documents beyond what is in this report that we've gotten? There's there's like a, a worksheet and a checkbox. It looks a lot like the one I gave you, um, but they don't they don't say like prove to me. But now when they come to CUSAC though, they can look at that. So every what is it three or four years? Every three years when they come, some of the some of the questions on CUSAC are related to HIV. So we, at that point, we do have to provide. We have to provide um, like agendas and sign in sheets for the meetings that we're supposed to have, uh, maybe a, a short video or a link to a video that shows something we did, right? Somewhere along. Oh, and then the curriculum, too, those kinds of things. Great, thank you. I just had a basic question. I, I see that, you know, in a couple of places, we kind of, you know, rated ourselves, uh, you know, a point or two less, um, you know, look like one of them was that there was, uh, uh, that, that, that there was appropriate amount of um, instruction provided to the staff and another one, um, I think that there was a certain number of meetings held. So this is also interactive and, and there's feed, as a feedback loop so that we, you know, that it's corrected, right? I mean, it sounds like that whatever happens here that maybe we didn't hit a perfect score, that's taken into account going forward and the staff kind of makes corrections. Almost every time we just, they're grading themselves harder than they need to be. Like they, they'll, if it says, you know, multiple times, they, they might say, well, we only did it eight times and we should have done it 10, something like that. So typically when I ask questions about follow-up questions like you're asking me that's the answer but um if there is something like let's say for example 
we weren't comfortable with the way we trained our staff on, on the HIV policy. So that, that's important. And that's part of something we put in place, Sandy and myself, with this thing called a statement of assurance that, um, that the principals signed that their staff was all trained on that policy. And each one of their staff members signs that they were trained on it. So, so we put some of the things in place to make sure that, that, that these things are being covered. Great, thank you. Most of the categories are numbers, like how many events you had for students to be, that addressed HIV, how many meetings did you have, how many professional development things did you have? You know, it's mostly, you count how many and that's how you determine your score. Oh, so it's more quantitative than maybe I assumed it was, okay. It's more quantitative than qualitative. You know, gotcha. you're just kind of counting. And sometimes they forget things like, well, you go into character ed every single week with students, so that's one, <laughs> you know, so Steve's right. Some, they underscore themselves sometimes. Yeah, it, it is kind of interesting because like I'm looking at one of these where it says the school safety, school climate team uh, met at least two times per school year to develop and it goes through what it develops. And the score is out of three and it's two out of three. <laughs> so it's like, well, if they met once, then what do you get if you met, tw you know, like, yeah, it is. That's why I was asking, is there supporting documentation? Because I'm not sure how the state would look at this. Do they just look and say, you filled it out, check? Like a, only a CUSAC, CUSAC type. But that's a CUSAC. Right. For, when you send it to the state now, they just say, you submitted it. That's the, their verification is, thank you for submitting. All right. Um, that they never came out and said that. I mean, if you're using some common sense, that could be the case, but they do say they review it and then they tell you whether or not it's okay. Got it. Okay. Like I, so basically for, for CUSAC, you guys saw it before, right? You see all those folders. One of them has the DPRs for CUSAC and it'll have like those agendas and the signage sheets for those meetings you just talked about have to be in there. Okay. All right. Very good. All right, well, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, if nothing else, um, we can move on to superintendent's comments. Steve, unless, do you wanna wait since you just spoke or do you wanna just keep going? I'm ready. Okay. Um, the foundation of uh, Golf Outings Foundation, the Denville Education Foundation is October 16th and um, they just announced to the staff that if they were interested in going, they were able to give them um, a 50% off. So hopefully we'll get some staff to go. Um, Valley View Athletics Update. Boys soccer. So the season started a little slow at one five and one, but they're starting to continue to work hard. They have some steady play from eighth veteran eighth graders and some number of sixth and seventh graders are getting some significant time. Girls soccer, the Valley View team is off to a strong start and is currently undefeated. And this is from the other day, Mike, are they still undefeated? Yeah, right. So that's, that's great. They look, they look really good when I saw them the last time. And, um, Every every student every uh, student athlete has scored at least one goal this season. The team that consists of a large number of eighth graders has shown great respect for one another and their opponents, and they're looking forward to the rest of the regular season and getting ready for um, success in the playoffs. Cross country, off to an exciting start. They've had eight multiple meets, several try meets. The girls have had a remarkable start. Uh, remaining undefeated with strong performances from many of our runners. The boys have been competitive in all of our meets and have won four. We have some newcomers on the teams and we're starting to get their stride and, and with several finishing in the, top, in the top performers. We hosted our first try meet on October 5th at Valley View. I don't know if you've ever been up for one of them, but it, it, it's pretty cool with the big shoot at the end. And it's a pretty active place now, right? And the bathroom is squared away, by the way, so it's it's ready to go. Um, the uh, the event I was at was a girls' soccer game and a boys' and girls' cross country meet, and it, it was a super active place, right? There's a lot of parents, a lot of people there, and uh, it was it was really nice to see that facility being used. Um, additionally, we're getting ready to begin our intramural flag football next month, and they're making preparations to start the winter season. And that's it for the superintendent's comments. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Dr. Cullis, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Uh, Educational Connections is running the parent workshop this Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m. You can look at the, uh, the registrations on the website, the Friday folder, superintendent's uh, letter, 
and sign up for that. It's free. It's about sixth grade study skills. So it's, we're running it from fifth grade to eighth grade, and it's about how parents can support their kids' study skills at home. Uh, last week was our week of respect, so all of the schools had multiple activities going on. They had spirit dress-up days, advisory activities, the grade levels had different activities, and, and guest speakers. So every day was uh, full of exciting uh, reminders about respect, and there's a lot in, in October, you know, with about anti-bullying, anti-drug, um, a lot of good things in October. Uh, this concludes the assistant superintendent's report. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mrs. Gorowski, uh, anything from Business Administrator's Office tonight? One comment. Uh, for the fourth year in, in, in a row, the district has received the Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting, and we are very happy to report this. Congratulations. I think we're all very happy uh, at the board level to hear that. That's, uh, that's fantastic work. Thank you so much, and congratulations to all of you. Okay, uh, if uh, nothing else, we'll, we'll move on to um, open public comment. Uh, this is the first public comment portion of the evening. Uh, the rules and parameters are laid out in the agenda. If you would like to speak and are in the, in the chamber, you can approach and announce your name and address for the public. If you are online, um, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand. Um, and I'll open at 7.42 p.m. All right, seeing no one in the chamber approach and no one online, I'm gonna close uh, this first public comment section at 7.42 p.m. and we will move to old business, no action to be taken. Uh, Mrs. No, sorry, my, my mouth is not working today. Mrs. Adalis, could you move us through these items for our next meeting? Sure, uh, at the next meeting, uh, myself or someone else will recommend the following. Uh, to be resolved, the reports from September 2023, the treasurer and board secretary reports, the education reports, uh, student enrollment, the report of health office, and the minutes from September 11th and September 25th. Great, thank you. Um, any comments or questions on these items for discussion tonight? If not, uh, let's move on. We'll move on to new business action to be taken. Uh, Dr. Moore, I'm gonna ask you to move us through personnel for tonight, please. Uh, sure. <clears throat> I'd like to move the uh, following resolutions under personnel. Under item number one, we have a, a new position for instructional aid, um, an increase in FTE for an instructional aid, uh, another increase in FTE for an instructional aid, and the resignation of a bus driver. Under uh, item number two, we have an unpaid leave of absence. Number three is a revised leave of absence, um, a retroactive uh, approval for leave of absence, and uh, two other leave of absences. And then for number four, we have um, Walmart and Booten approved for uh, optional vaccine clinic. And item number five, we have uh, new hire substitutes A through E. And then on the addendum uh, under A, there's a new hire for instructional uh, personnel aid, personal aid rather. I'll second. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, any comments or questions? So number four was set up with another company and just the, their parameters were too strict for us. We couldn't meet all the parameters. So Jessica worked to get another provider who's actually going to offer different types of vaccines as well. I think uh, shingles and all kinds of other yeah. things. So the staff is signing up again, no cost to the, to the district and it's totally optional. So the CVS arrangement uh, is basically falling through. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, it, it just wasn't. They, they wanted a certain amount guaranteed, and there were just too many things that just didn't play out, so this is this worked. Uh, if you needed another pharmacy, I think um, 
I wouldn't mind if we tried some of the local mom and pop shops or even the Acme Pharmacy uh, in Denville, in town. Um, uh, I've worked with them before, so I know that they're quite capable. But even some of the uh, independents uh, could be an option as if, if that's something you wanted to consider. Uh, I see we have a uh, bus driver uh, resignation. Uh, just curious, how we uh, overall, how are we doing for bus drivers? Obviously, that's been an issue in the past. Just general personnel question. We have just enough drivers to drive every school bus and one sub. Uh, the issue is absenteeism. When we have a few people out, then it could be an issue. All right, thank you. All right, uh, if nothing else, okay, roll call please. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Adelis? Yes. Dr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Kim? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to instruction and program. Mr. Anderson, can I turn it over to you to take us through these items? Sure, if there are no objections, I'd like to move under B, instruction and program uh, resolutions one, workshop with expenses. There's three of them. Number two, uh, the approved and attached uh, field trips. And number three, which is the board approved the report of the 2022-2023 HIB self-grading, which Dr. Forte presented earlier. Second. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Um, any comments or questions on these items? Actually, I had a question about the field trips. Um, do we, uh, uh, forgive me, I don't remember if last year we started going to like Washington DC or anything like that. Is, uh, if we haven't, are, are there plans to start looking into that? The overnight field trips have been seized for now. So they're um, ceased, right, not seized. That's good. Uh, they there have been some. Um, they're doing like the, a day trip, and they're all like nature based lately. They're gonna they're gonna change up one of them because they found that two of them were too similar, so they're gonna change them up. So w w last year, sixth and seventh grade did like a nature trip, science right, science based nature education, environmental education, and then the seventh the eighth grade goes to uh, Dorney Park. This year, they're planning on changing the sixth or the seventh just because they felt like it was a little too close, so they're going to do something a little different, but I don't have the details on that yet. But they do not have plans to go overnight at this point. Okay. okay. Uh, if nothing else... Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Adelis? Yes. Dr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Kim? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to finance. Uh, looks like you have a, a light night uh, tonight, Mr. Kim. I'll ask you to move us through that this item. Sure. I motion that we approve the budget calendar for 2024-2025. I'll second. Great. Thank you both. Uh, any comments or questions on the calendar? Uh, if I may, um, just wanted to give the board a heads up that it looks like we'll be getting our budget calendars, or at least the finance committee uh, for next year will be getting the budget um, binders around February. Is that, uh, is that sound right, Demers? I would not commit right now, but uh, it seems possible. <laughs> we'll right. work on it. Excellent. We're still in the preliminary uh, stage of putting uh, items together. So it looks like the next uh, four or five months you'll be working hard on that. Absolutely. Great. So, yep. I look forward to it. Thank you. 
Mr. Kim, I thought you were going to uh, tell us that it was going to be another tough budget cycle. Um, I'm sure we have a lot to talk about, so yeah. <laughs> I won't commit to that either. All right, if uh, nothing else, uh, roll call, please. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Adelis? Yes. Dr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Kim? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Okay, uh, moving on to operations. Uh, Mr. Cass, can I throw it over to you for these items tonight? Apparently. Under buildings and grounds and operations, we have uh, transportation items to move. I'm going to ask the board to approve to publish an advertisement for bid solicitations for the sale of the following school bus, bus number 187, a 2011 international 54 passenger bus. Next item is to let the board approve to utilize the district school buses to transport students from Little Learner Limited LLC at an hourly rate of $70 per hour on the following dates, October 17, 2023, going to Whiteman Farms, October 19, 2023, Whiteman Farms, and October 18th, going to the Ideal Farms. Second. Thank you, Mr. Cass. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Any comments, questions on uh, these items? I had a quick question. Um, the bus we're talking about, this was the bus that was referenced in the committee report, the one with the fuel tank where the, the cost doesn't make sense, right? Okay. Yeah, we have discussed uh, during the committee meeting when or how we would replace it as well. Uh, and so uh, Damaris did share that if there's uh, funds available, then we'll look to put it in the budget or to somehow purchase it this year with the funds available from this year. Correct. So actually, so I had a question. So are we not um, bus constrained at this point? Like we have more buses than we use on a daily basis? We have two spare buses right now that we are currently using, and we'll be using one of those to replace the one that we're going to be selling. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. So ending this two years before it technically would be due isn't necessarily harming us from an operational point of view. Uh, our mechanic it doesn't... Um, He's, he's doesn't want to spend $15,000 $15, dollars to replace a fuel tank. Is not cost um, prohibited uh, to do this when we only have two more years on, with this bus. Okay, great. Okay, uh, nobody else. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mrs. Ajelis? Yes. Dr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Kim? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Okay, uh, we're moving on to new business, no action to be taken. Um, Dr. Moore, I'll throw it back to you. If you could take us through these items for our next meeting. Uh, sure. Uh, at the next meeting, either myself or someone else will move for approval the following resolutions under personnel. Under item number one, we have uh, custodian uh, cashing out sick days. Um, a lunch aid resignation, uh, bus driver for the kindergarten run replacing the previous uh, bus driver resignation, um, psychologist uh, retroactive pay for developing the counseling social skills schedule for Lakeview School, and a teacher to provide home instruction uh, for 23-24 school year. Uh, under item number two, there's revisions to the job descriptions for school counselor, social worker, and psychologist. And for item number three, uh, the board is approving um, several Morris Knowles students to observe at Riverview School. Item number four, 
uh, that the board uh, approve the attached shared services agreement with CJ Pride for 23-24. And it doesn't look like there's any items for number five. For number six, we have uh, mentor-mentee relationships for Lakeview School at 550 each. And then item number seven is mentor-mentee fees uh, 2324 at $1,000 each for Riverview and Valley View. Great, thank you very much. Um, do you know I have a Go question? Ahead. Go ahead. Um, Damaris, during our uh, committee meeting, we discussed Mr. Marinelli uh, changing him into a full fee, uh, one full FTE. Is that going to be on the board? Okay, so, okay. Understood. I, I have a couple quick questions. Um, the and this might be for you, Mr. Capella. Uh, the CJ Pride, can can you explain that just a little bit? I I, I looked over the the document a bit, but um, what it is? CJ Pride. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to rely on Dr. Forte for this. CJ Pride is a shared services consortium of. It started off with maybe 20 districts. Now it's grown to a lot. Other, there's a lot of districts. It's a, um, it's a group that's primary function is to try to diversify the workforce of school districts, ethnically, gender-wise, any, any kind of diversification of, of the workforce of, of school districts and trying to help support, um, try to help uh, promote and back certain legislation that might help increase the um, the racial diversity of our of our teaching people going in you know into the workforce like not just Denville or even you know any of the school districts in there but really trying to promote ways to get people from different backgrounds to go into the profession and their other their second major function is they do a job fair every year. And those are the two things. We've, we've been a member of it for, I would say, four or five years, probably right before COVID we started. And um, to be honest, I don't feel like we've, we're able to really do any of the things that the point of it was. Like we're, we've committed to it for this year. We've been, we're still doing all the work, but I think it's time to, to reevaluate and see if there's something else out there. If this doesn't, um, if it's not gonna keep working for us. One of the things that, the one negative thing about it is it's really based in Trenton. So when we, when the people go to the, the, the uh, job fairs, there, there aren't as many from the northern part of the state as there are from the central and the south. And that, that has caused some issues for us. Um, but we've committed to do it for, for this year. We've already been you know, involved in it and moving along and we're gonna reevaluate it at the end of this year. Thanks. Uh, one other quick question. I'm just wondering um, why for, for uh, Lakeview under number six, there's a, a difference in pay for mentor and mentee uh, versus Riverview and Valley View? Well, it, that's just coincidence. That happens to be different schools. But the stu th those that have done a student teaching program, it, it, only pay 550 to a mentor, where those are coming with a CE, meaning they're coming from like the business world or a science degree, but they've never gone through any teaching classes. They have to pay more because the mentor has to now teach them how to be teachers, as well as they have to go to night classes. So that's why. Um, if they have a CE, it's $1,000. If they have a CEAS, which means advanced standing is you've done student teaching, then you pay less because the assumption is you are your cooperating teacher in your student teaching did a lot of that work already. So the people that are coming in, no one has ever worked with them before. So Adrian Delacqua and then these two math, the two math teachers will have to do more work to mentor them. That's the state fee. So, so these are folks, I, I don't know what it's called now. We used to call it the alternate route uh, it's Correct. That's the alternate route people. Yep. There's even two different kinds of alternate routes, but they both end up, they go through this process, they pay these fees, they go to classes at night, 
uh, and then after they get a provisional license and in two years they can get a standard license. So yes, that is the difference. They just pay more. And we still do reimburse them if they're rehired back the next year. And that's, and that's just a little yeah. background, Dr. Moore and others. So when I know at least this goes maybe five years or six years back, those fees were not reimbursed. And when we had a discussion about it, it was like, well, a lot of times these are like newer teachers or on the lower end of the guide. Like, so we discussed it as a board and agreed to reimburse those fees. Therefore, they're not out of pocket for that mentor mentee, which is required for them. So just something I think that works out well. It's not a huge cost to the board. And I think is a nice gesture to our newer employees. Absolutely. And we also require that they attend meetings every month. So there's some requirements that they have to meet and then be hired back before we reimburse. So it can they get continued education that isn't part of the program, but we offer it. So they have to attend those meetings because we think it's important that they they meet every month with our mentor coordinator. So there's a little bit they have to do, but it's definitely it's worth the money and it's worth it for them too. Just quickly on B, on number 7B, is it supposed to be switched? I believe uh, the mentee was a permanent sub, is that correct? Previously? Correct, but now she's been hired as an alternate teacher. teacher. She went and took her assessments. The mentors, I think that's, my guess is that's a, because of a leave issue. The mentors, why they're split like that? Correct. They're both, they're both uh, splitting the mentor job. Yes. Because they're on leave, and then when one comes back, they're going to leave. Yep. All right, great. Thank you. Um, any other questions before we move on? Good. Okay. Uh, all right, um, let's move on to instruction and program. Uh, Mr. Anderson, will you take us through these items for our next meeting? Sure, at our next meeting, myself or someone else will move through instruction and program. Uh, the following items we've got uh, just right now, some workshops uh, with expenses. There's three of them listed on the agenda for uh, three teachers, two from Lakeview and one from Riverview. And that on, on let us see, the day should be 2023, not 21. March 13th. Thank 13, you, good catch. That corrected. Thank you. Twenty-four, probably, right? Yeah. Twenty-four. Great. Thank you. Uh, any comments, questions on these uh, INP items before we move on? Okay, um, looking ahead, Mr. Kim, I see that you're not gonna have much coming up, so I'm gonna ask you to do the policy section if you would not mind. Sure, I don't mind. Uh, during our next meeting, we'll be voting on uh, the policies for our first reading, of which two will be abolished and 12 are new for our first reading. Thank you. Uh, comments or questions on any of these uh, policy or regulation items? Are the majority of these policies and regulations uh, state mandated uh, or state changed regulations? Do we know that off the top of the head or just curious? The, the two attendance ones that say new come from that new attendance sick day law. So it's embedded in there. And um, the other ones, I mean, these are all policies we've had that just getting updated. Um, I had a question about the examination for cause ones. I know we have the one for certificated and non-certificated. They looked the same. Um, my question is kind of general, I guess, uh, procedure. So if there is a staff member who um, you feel needs to be sent out to have an examination done, um, is there anything in the policy that prevents you from getting them, taking them out of the schools while, while that's happening, while that process is happening? Like, what would be the process if you saw a, a staff member that you felt needed to be examined? What, what, would, your, what would your process be? The process would be that, I mean, typically, if we were sending them out for a reason, they, wouldn't, they would not come back to work until they're cleared. That, that would be the process. 
Yeah. I didn't see any of that in the policy. That's why I wanted to ask the question. Is like that would be the typical thing, right? It would they would be until they were cleared or until they went through the process of appealing to us. I mean, that's all there, but none of the working, not working part was there. So that was my question. Yeah, I would have the ability to put to do that as a, uh, a paid leave until cleared. And just a quick question on um, abolishing policy 3432 sick leave. Is that because that's now embedded into that from the state law? It's embedded in the attendance policy. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I think what it is is there. Um, Typically, the way Strauss estimate does it is when a new law comes out, sometimes there's a, a brand new policy that takes the place of another one. And in this particular case, I, I believe that's exactly what it is. Great. Thank you. And then the school nutrition programs abolishing, what's, uh, any background on that one? Yeah, it's in another one. I forget okay. the name of it. But Got the it. Uh, like going back to the attendance thing, if you guys remember, that was really late, right? It was like August or something, right? So it was, the school year was about to start. They came up with a quick policy that they even sent to us saying most likely it's going to be changed again and that's that's what happened okay uh all right if we're good on policy um mr kim it doesn't look like you have anything to talk about in, in finance oh. so i think we can safely skip that uh let's move on to Actually, <laughs> Don, Mr. Cass, it looks like you're in the same boat. We don't have any items there uh, currently. So I guess we can safely move to good of the cause. Um, it's been a little weird month with the, the way we structured it with the two big events in the middle of the year, in the middle of the month. So there's a lot more things on for action today than we normally would, but just because of timelines. So that, that's kind of why there's not much coming down the road there yet. And how do you guys feel about these comments for my four highlights? I have um, the HIV self-grading, the ASBO award, and the two presentations on August 30th, which are the audit and um, Dr. College presenting on NJSLA, which if you think about it, those are two really important things. Those are two main functions, right? Education and how do we pay for education? I like that very much, unless anyone has any other suggestions. I think that's uh, good call outs. I know we got the committee reports. Um, Mr. Kim, I, I'm just I'm thinking of yours specifically. Is there anything else that we didn't get to tonight on the committee on your finance, on the your report that you'd like to call out or? Yeah, I noticed in the folders that the schedule for next year was uh, in some of the folders. Um, were we planning on voting on that this uh, this month or? No, it's I'd like to get it done in November, but we I have to wait for the five districts to kind of come together. We're right now. That's the draft, but we like to be in in uh, in concert at least with spring break. That's the big one. So um, the way we have it now in there is just I'm just waiting here from the other districts if, if we're ready to go. I noticed in October uh, you reduced it from two meetings to one meeting. Then was that also because of like the school boards? Uh, event that happens every October as well. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the school calendar. The school calendar is in the, the proposed draft school calendar is in there. You're talking about the Board of Education meeting calendar. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. Sorry about I, that. Yeah, yeah. The, Maris okay. worked on that, so maybe you can answer that. That's on the draft right now, and yes, it's because some holidays, and we were also thinking of the, of the outing, the golf outing, so we're trying to minimize it either to one and then put two in September. It's, normally in September, we only have one. So next year we'll have two meetings in September and one in October just to accommodate the conferences and the golf outing. Um, September, we had, this year we had two meetings as well. So every September, I feel like we do have two meetings. In the past, we used to have one to accommodate the golf outing and I now see. we're going back. Okay, cause, so essentially what that means is that next year's um, board calendar board meeting calendar will only have one meeting in October, one meeting in November, and one meeting in December. 
So um, I don't know if that's acceptable for the rest of the board. I feel like since the school is starting fresh, um, I, you know, during the summer, I do like having one meeting like in June, July, and August. I mean, if anything, I, if I saw correctly, maybe we could just have one meeting in June. No, I don't know. But uh, essentially, um, the the fall and winter months, I'm, I'm kind of concerned if uh, just having one meeting per month in October, November, December is good. This is only a draft right now. We're still working on it and um, ironing all the dates, and making sure of between holidays and other events. And again, this is a work in progress. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. This will be approved in January, so we still have some time to work on it. Got it. Thank you. I used to be a fan when we had one board meeting a month. Just going <laughs> to put it out there. I'm a big fan of three You're vacation months in summer. So, <laughs> um, so uh, from the committee report, I had a question, or I mean, I, not a question. I guess I'd like to talk a little bit about your um, discussion about the free lunches. Um, Looks like the number of students enrolled in free lunch has increased to 90. The cost of the meal has gone up about 21%. Um, the cost has gone from um, what we're about $19,000 short in this budget. Um, and you're thinking about uh, up, upping the overall budget from 65 to 100,000 to cut for next year. So I just want to throw that out there. That's these are obviously numbers that are going up. They're increasing. The need is increasing. Um, you know, I, I just want us to maybe get our heads around this, and I don't know if there's, you know, anything we can do about it other than continuing to, uh, you know, obviously fund these lunches and put money into the budget to make sure that the kids uh, get the meals they need. But I just want to talk about it and see what everybody's thoughts are. So I open it up. Yeah, we did discuss it during the committee meeting, and it was definitely alarming. Um, we didn't really discuss at length of, of possible solutions or what uh, what what we can do to mitigate it, but um, I, that was something I wanted to bring up uh, during this board meeting as well. So um, one question that I did have post-meeting, Damaris, is that uh, do we suddenly cross that threshold? I know you told us about a threshold in the past where we didn't qualify for like um, USDA type of uh, funding, but do we, uh, will we, would this put us across that threshold for that type of uh, opportunity? We have not received all the applications yet. Uh, once we receive all the lunch application and, we'll, and we evaluate the, um, the trash hall for free, then we'll have a better percentage. But l last year, we still did not uh, meet that 5%. And can you remind us again, uh, if we did cross that threshold, what kind of funding or benefits uh, the district might be able to uh, gain from that? If we do cross that uh, threshold 5%, I will have to apply to the nutrition, uh, the Department of Agriculture and Nutrition Program. And that will take a process. That will be at least one year a process and we will have to organize it with outside vendors. We do not have a kitchen in none of our schools. So it's a little um, complicated for us, Denville, just because we do not have that availability of, of building a kitchen. So we will have to outsource those services, and that would be a little more complicated for us just because the food had to have a certain degree of temperature. They had to be refrigerated, or if it's hot, it had to be a, a certain degree of uh, uh, hotness just to make sure that we serve correctly. So there's a lot of per, um, parameters and issues that we have to jump over and make sure that we are in compliance. And we'll be... And they will be monitoring us for a few months until we get it correctly. So it would take a while before we can get to that point. And Demer, is that threshold is for the whole district or for an individual school? It could be individual or it's the entire district. Because a couple of years ago, I thought we talked about one of our schools was over that threshold or really close. Didn't we talk about this? We have one of our schools who is very, very close to that 5%. And again, we try to outsource it. However, we don't want to cut the middle man either. So it's just a little more to the story than what yeah, I revealed. Yeah. yeah, so if we theoretically had kitchens in all of our schools, I know that's is a theoretical since we have none. Um, but if we did, then we would probably go through a process of 
having a vendor provide lunches for students and then we would apply for a federal grant that would support the percentage of students that were free and reduced lunch to help offset the cost of those students is that the process that a school with a, a kitchen would go through that is that is true will be what we will be requesting reimbursement for those free lunches and yes the district will be fully paid for i would like to highlight too the township did double their their uh donation through social services to the lunch program from 5,000 to 10,000 after I asked them if they could help us defray some of these costs. So that, that was pretty nice of them to jump right on that. You guys remember that this started off at around 35,000 when we first started doing this. Now it's been a long time, if you remember, like it might've been like your first two, your first year, probably you guys, right? It was right around then because I remember coming to you and telling you that, do you think it's only been six or seven? Even? Yeah, it was a okay. few years in. It, was, okay. it wasn't right at the beginning, but yeah. But it's gone from 36,000 to 100,000. I do think Dino brings up a good point because that is such a huge increase. I mean, we're looking at potentially uh, 80, 70 percent increase from 65,000 to 100,000. So uh, the question now becomes, is this uh, the start of a trend and do we have to start you know, worrying about it if, uh, you know, with all the new housing that's coming in as well. So um, that threshold um, figure should be an interesting thing to look at. And uh, yeah, something we'll keep an eye on as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's the, you know, the, the point, James, you, you asked Damaris about, about the money that the, you know, once you hit those levels, in my mind, that's not, that's not money you're just getting. There are a huge number of requirements that come along with that in terms of the lunches you have to, how you have to provide them, like what Damaris was saying, the nutritional value, like all of those rules now you have to now start, uh, you know, abiding by. So it becomes, you know, it becomes, it could be, it could be onerous, you know, especially for us because we don't have our own facilities. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, I think you just triggered a memory that we had this discussion before about Lakeview, right? And the costs uh, for, going down that process and, and providing all the services was gonna be a lot more for the district as well. So yeah, that's a very good point. And there was so, very important personnel. too, no more PTA lunches. That's, that's, the big, that's the big one, that was a big issue. I mean, because we have to remember that, that PTA's biggest fundraiser at all three schools, I believe, is the, a lot of their lunch programs, so. So I had a question on the so where's the big uptick percentage-wise on the number of students that are, are, are now eligible for free lunch, more newer students, or the existing population all of a sudden got into that category? And, uh, you know, every time my wife goes to the supermarket now, the cost of food has really skyrocketed. So, um, and I don't know if it'll ever go back down. So you have two, two things. I mean, what's, what's the the larger factor, the, uh, the cost of food? The cost driver is the cost of food that increased uh, this year. The number of students was still feeding approximately the same number of students as last year until we receive all the applications. But the bigger cost is the increase in food. So, um, I mean, one thing I would maybe suggest we put in our heads is, you know, the town has been very generous and they've increased their, the, uh, the revenue, but like we go out and look for additional revenue grants and things that, you know, and Steve, you've brought in revenue for lots of different other initiatives we've had. This may be one we, maybe we need to look a little further afield and see if we, there's some money of it that might be available to help us offset the costs. Um, something for us to think and look at, so. One year I got, 2500 on top of the money we got from the town from Wells Fargo. We can still do those too, those kinds of grants. Getting back to the, the I guess the wholesale, you know, with the food, I mean, so whoever we're getting the food from is, is paying more and they're passing on that expense. So have they done anything on their end to, you know, make sure we maintain the necessary nutritional levels? They're looking for a better buy someplace else or you know, working with other districts, you know, buying more for some place to uh, mitigate the continuing cost increases. Two, two of our school uses the same vendor, uh, including the PTA that we are currently using for the free lunches. And the middle school uses a variety of other vendors, a whole a collection of different vendors. 
And Damaris, I think last time we looked into this, that vendor that's used at two of the schools is USDA compliant, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Don, I think the other thing, and correct me if I'm wrong, Damaris and Steve, but we also work with the vendors who provide a reduced rate for those free and reduced lunches. So they're, it's not the market rate, so to say, as to what someone else would pay if you were just buying those lunches. I think it's a, a reduced rate, but obviously, as we all know, when we go to the food store or we go to the you know gas station, you can see the price of everything has gone up. So I think part of it's I think it, you kind of get hit with both sides, the increase in the amount of students that require that uh, need or, or need have that uh, need, and also obviously the increase in price. So I think it's a double whammy. Well, thanks. I mean, again, thank you to the committee for having this discussion, and I just wanted to uh, have it here and go to the cause. Um, this is obviously something we'll need to keep we'll need to keep talking about. Uh, Mr. Capello, if I may, from from the committee, there was a few other things that I wanted to bring up uh, tonight. Um, of course, I wanted to congratulate Damaris and her team for the uh, Certificate of Excellence Awards, uh, but also the uh, we received our last check from uh, the grant for uh, one of the HVAC projects that we had. And I think you totaled the last check that uh, the, the district received um, amounted to almost half a million dollars for that project. So again, congratulations and thank you for all your hard work uh, to Dr. Forte and to Damaris and the rest of the administration. Um, I also wanted to bring up a, a conversation we had uh, and uh, Dr. Forte, I don't know if you wanted to uh, give the rest of the board a synopsis of uh, what you told uh, the committee, but it was in reference to the lease uh, in St. Mary's and the work you no, 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 you would you rather save it for the committee? It, since it's a um, since it's a negotiation, we can talk about that in executive. It's a it's a legal matter, so we will I will give them a little update on that. Okay, great, thank you. So uh, that was it then, uh, Mr. Capello. Great, thank you. Um, and just to keep the board up to date uh, on the space issue, we uh, the committee uh, the space considerations committee has a meeting coming up on the uh, on the nineteenth. So we'll I'm sure we'll have more of an update after uh, after that meeting. Do you know if I may, I've got Go two uh, quick updates. Dr. Forte mentioned earlier the Denville Education Foundation golf outing next Monday. Um, if anybody is interested in golfing, um, that is, uh, I believe, at 11 o'clock lunch. Uh, and I think uh, shotgun start at 1 p.m., I believe, is the start. Um, for those of you who don't want to golf, um, there is dinner that evening. Um, I believe it's at 6.30, I believe it starts. They do a tricky tray. They do dinner, live auction. It's a good time. I did hear today, um, thanks for the update on the teachers too. I think they had about 16 or so teachers already sign up. So should be a good uh, group uh, coming to dinner. Uh, and then in addition to that, the Denville Education Foundation is doing a kickoff uh, event for that golf outing this Thursday at um, Diamond Spring Brewing Company. So if you'd like to stop by 6 to 10 p.m., no cost to that, just stop by and uh, grab a beer and bring some food over if you want and hang out with uh, some of the folks from the foundation. Sounds good, thanks. You said you had two items, were those the two? Yeah, those, those, are, oh, those okay. two items, yes, thank you. Gotcha. Okay, uh, if nothing else, everybody good? Uh, just, um, uh, I think it was uh, two weekends ago, is it the, the Sunrise Rotary Club did the duck race? Is that, uh, yeah, we, we went to that, and uh, I wanna mention that uh, when, when several uh, ducks broke free, um, uh, folks really leaped in, including uh, Mrs. Sedalis, uh, leaped into the into the river in jeans to uh, to rescue ducks, and um, it was uh, it was actually a really nice time. the The weather was pretty pretty lousy, and they made it really nice. It was it was a lot of fun, and uh, um, the the high school performing arts. I'm not getting their name right, but they they performed, and they were amazing. I mean, it was. It was just really neat to see, and um, it was neat to see them encourage each other too. My wife and I talked about it afterwards. It was just uh, um, watching the, the the kids kind of support each other as they were performing was was pretty cool. But it was a really really nice event. We were happy to go, even though it was kind of drizzling. You didn't even notice it. Uh, so 
uh, thanks to them, and uh, thank you for rescuing our ducks, Mrs. Sedalis. Um, about 125 ducks went through the barrier and floated down the Rockaway River. Uh, so our kayakers, uh, Mark Rooney and Scott Rooney, went after them and brought home 125 ducks. And then I called 125 people to come pick up their ducks, and they're currently in front of my house. So if anybody lost a duck, uh, get in touch with me, and I'll get your duck back. Well, that, that's above and beyond uh, our waterways. Thank you. That's uh, impressive, impressive work. I didn't want to be a polluter, so. All right. Uh, if uh, we're good, with, we're going to move on to our second public comment section of the evening. Uh, same rules are in effect. They are in the agenda. If you're in the chambers and would like to uh, make a statement, you can approach uh, and announce your name and address for uh, the record. If you're online, you can just raise your hand and unmute yourself and you'll be recognized. Uh, we'll open up for open public comment at 8.26 p.m. All right, seeing no one online and no one in the chamber approaching, I'm gonna close uh, the second public comment section at 8.26 p.m. Steve, do we have a need for an executive session? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, Mrs. Zedalis, I'm gonna ask you to move us into executive if you wouldn't mind. No problem. Uh, so I move to convene us in an executive session in accordance with the section eight of the Open Public Meetings Act. The purpose of this closed session will be to discuss negotiations, legal security and personal issues and student issues. Minutes of this session will be made available to the public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Zedalis. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, uh, we are in, ex we'll be in executive at 8.27 p.m. and we do not anticipate uh, taking any actions after that. Thank you.